Hello, welcome. This is uh, electrochemistry part seven. We're looking at electrolytic cells. Now, electrolytic cell is a little bit different from voltaic cells in that what we're doing this time is we're not getting energy from it or getting voltage from it. We're actually putting current into it. And so this requires an input of energy. Well, so if it requires an input of energy, it doesn't happen on its own, then these are always non spontaneous. So for non-spontaneous um, sorts of electrochemical problems, um, they're what they call electrolytic cells, and sometimes it's called uh, electroplating or electrolysis. So we're going to talk about those words in a little bit. And uh, here's a good little acronym for you to remember, ANOX Red Cat. And so uh, here's what we have. We have molten NaCl. So this is going to be very hot, and so it's in liquid form. Because uh, you remember that um, the ionic lattice of NaCl is so tight that it will not conduct electricity, but uh, once it's dissociated enough into liquid form, then it will conduct electricity between them. And so we have to get it in liquid form. So once it's in liquid form, uh, we apply um, electricity to this, and so the electrical current is going to move um, this way from the anode to the cathode. So the um, electricity is moving in this direction, and are the um, electrons. So since the electrons are moving from here, the anions are going to be drawn to the anode. That's where you have anox, because at the anode, oxidation is going to occur. So the negative anions, the chlorine anions, are going to be oxidized, which means that um, we're going to want to get rid of their electrons, and that's going to turn them into chlorine gas. On the other side, on the cathode side, the red cat, at the cathode side, it's going to be a reduction is going to happen where these positives are going to gain an electron right here, and that's going to turn them into solid sodium. And so just to prove that this is definitely non-spontaneous, um, let's look up at our reduction potentials real quick, and we find um, that sodium, let's find sodium on here. Mm, where is it? There it is. Sodium right here is a negative, negative 2.71 for voltage. Uh, chlorine, where's chlorine? Here's chlorine right here. Uh, chlorine is going to be a positive 1.36 and we are oxidizing it. So we're going to flip this reduction potential backwards and make it a negative 1.36. So these are going to add together, negative 1.36 plus negative uh, 2.71 is going to give us a total negative 4.07 volts. And remember, a negative voltage like this is non-spontaneous. This is uh, going to require energy, so we have to at least put in 4.07 volts for this to occur. And so that would kind of give you an idea of exactly how much voltage needs to happen in order for this electrolytic cell to run. All right, let's uh, go ahead and look at the idea of electroplating real quick. If you've ever seen electroplating, it's the idea of taking something and coating it with uh, metal. And so say we have just an iron spoon and we want to coat it with silver. So what they've done is they've made an aqueous solution here of silver nitrate. We've plunked a piece of silver in here and so we run the battery and this is going to take our electrons down here into the spoon and so what's happening here is oxidation is going to be um, occurring at the anode and the uh, reduction is going to be occurring at the cathode and it's going to be causing the silver to coat the entire outside of this as these silvers uh, receive electrons, they're able to, um, to stick and become solid. So here's the question. After one hour of current and 1.75 amps, how many grams of silver will plate the iron spoon? And so you can actually figure out a total amount of grams that are going to go on the spoon. Um, here's the equation that we would use. The I, this right here, this I, this equals current, right? So current is measured in amps, and that's actually uh, the flow of electricity. Q right here is electrical charge. 
So um, charge is measured in coulombs, and we've talked about coulombs already. So there's your coulombs right there. And time right here underneath is measured in seconds. Okay, so we have all the information that we need. Uh, we've got one hour. And um, so let's go ahead and figure out then how much electrical charge we're going to pass through this. So 1.75 amps is my I. Stick that in there. Uh, divide it by my total amount of seconds, which one hour is 3,600 seconds. Gives me a total of 6,300 coulombs. So that's my total electrical charge. Um, an another thing is that the actual moles of electrons transferred equals the total amount of electrical charge in the system divided by Faraday's constant. And Faraday's constant is a number that, um, that always remains the same. It's 96,000, not 96 point, this is 96,485. It's a really, really large number. But you can easily solve for moles of electrons transferred if you know how much electrical charge and you know the constant, um, uh, Faraday's constant. Um, Faraday's constant is actually the amount of coulombs per mole. So 96,485 is the exact amount of coulombs in one mole. So this would make sense that if this is our total coulombs, it's kind of like um, finding moles from mass, only we're doing it with electrical charge. So we have a total amount, if we take this, we have a total amount of 0 0.065 moles of electrons. And, um, and so one thing that you have to be careful of is how many moles of electrons are transferred per one mole of iron? If you look back at the, um, the reduction potential thing, it'll usually tell you. Um, so we find out that here it's um, uh, per, per iron. Um, actually, it's not iron, it's uh, silver. So um, we're looking for silver, 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 where are you? Uh, and you're probably looking right at it, and I don't even see it. Uh, oh, there it is right there. So one to one. So one electron per one silver ion. All right? So, um, so it's a one to one process. So Ag uh, plus one electron uh, goes to Ag solid. So if it was two, like iron, we look at iron, iron's actually two electrons but we're not, we're transferring the silver right here. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So 0 0.065 moles of iron is uh, gonna be the same as the moles of electrons. So we multiply the moles of electrons times the molar mass of iron, which is 107.9 grams per mole. And we find out that we have a total of 7.05 grams of uh, silver. And so that is um, the total amount of silver that's going to coat the spoon right here.